Today is the fourth Sunday of the Pentecost, and our mission is to feed the hungry in body, mind, and spirit. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome at First Congregational Church. We are glad to connect with you in spirit, even though you are at home. We hope that you will worship God in spirit and in truth. Our statement of oneness, we're made in the image of God as, as we grow in faith and mature in spirit, that image shall shine all the more clearly. Like Jesus, we are children of God, Thus, as our birthright, we shall live all our days surrounded by unconditional love. Humanity, the image of God, is beautiful in God's sight, part of a magnificent creation. Therefore, we and you are beautiful in God's sight. The scriptures declare that the entire kingdom of God is within us, also, we live our lives immersed in divinity. We gather to celebrate that sacred and wondrous truth. Many hurtful and unjust things happen in our world, motivated by hatred or fear. Yet also there is love in our hearts. So let us declare that love and knowledge it is of God and promise to grow in love day by day. Call to worship is Psalm number 13. Your love, O God, is my song, and I will sing it. I am forever telling everyone how faithful you are. I will never quit telling the story of your love, how you built the cosmos and guaranteed everything in it. Your love has always been our life's foundation. Your fidelity has been a roof over our world. Everyone descending from you is guaranteed life. I will make your rule as solid and lasting as rock. Search high and low, scan skies and land, you will find nothing and no one quite like God. Opening Hymn 94, if you will trust in God to guide you. <laughs> prayer. Loving God, during this pandemic, we have come to a greater appreciation of how we are all connected. 
You have created us to live and care for all your people. We confess that challenging times make us sometimes angry and fearful. May we learn to replace hatred with love and conflict with cooperation. Teach us to accept and love others without being judgmental. Help us to see and bring out the best in others. Show us our similarities rather than our differences. Let forgiveness, acceptance and love be the guiding principles in all that we do. So help us God. Amen. Romans 6, 12 to 23. When you are dead to sin and alive to God, it means that you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Throw yourself wholeheartedly and full time remembering you have been raised from the dead. Throw yourself into God's way of doing things. Sin cannot tell you how to live. After all, you are not living under that old tyranny any longer. You are living in the freedom of God. So since we are out from under the old tyranny, does that mean we can live any old way we want? Since we are free in the freedom of God, can we do anything that comes to mind? Hardly. You know well enough from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that actually destroy freedom. Offer yourself to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act. But offer yourself to the ways of God and the freedom never quits. All your lives you have let sin tell you what to do. But thank God you have started listening to a new master, one whose command set you free to live openly in his freedom. I'm using this freedom language because it's easy to picture. You can readily recall, can't you, how at one time the more you did what you felt like doing, not caring about others, not caring about God, the worse your life became and the less freedom you had. And how much different is it now as you live in God's freedom? your lives healed and you are now living expensive in holiness. As long as you did what you felt like doing, ignoring God, you didn't have to bother with right thinking or right living or right anything for that matter. But do you call that a free life? What do you get out of it? Nothing you are proud of now. Where did it get you? A dead end. But now that you have found that you don't have to listen to sin tell you what to do and have discovered the delight of listening to God telling you, what a surprise! A whole healed, put together life right now with more and more of life on the way. Work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is death. But God's gift is real life, eternal life, delivered by Jesus, our Master. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 to 42. We are intimately linked in this harvest work. Anyone who accepts what you do 
accepts me, the one who sent you. Anyone who accepts what I do accepts my Father who sent me. Accepting a messenger of God is as good as being God's messenger. Accepting someone's help is as good as giving someone help. This is a large work I have called you into, but don't be overwhelmed by it. It is best to start small. Give a cool cup of water to someone who is thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving make you a true apprentice. You won't lose out on a thing. Today's sermon is called Accepting Someone's Help is as good as giving someone help. Have you ever noticed that people who are willing to help others, who are helpful to others, sometimes are unwilling to accept someone's help or ask for help when they need help. Why is it? If you ask these people, most people will say, oh, I don't want to bother people. I don't want to ask for help because I don't want to be obligated. I don't want to trouble somebody. But when you offer help to others and others accept your help, you know what is actually happening? Jesus talks about laying treasures in heaven. Do not lay treasures on earth, he says. It will rust, it will be stolen, but lay up treasures in heaven. How do you do that? When you do something helpful to help others, when you do something in the name of God, to guide other people. That is your way of laying treasures in heaven. Nobody can steal it from you. But the reverse is true. If others ask for help, and allow you to help them, they are actually allowing you to put some treasures in heaven. So if you need help, why are you afraid to allow others to put some treasures in heaven? Why are you not asking them for help? I know some people want the pastor to pray for them when they are in hospital or when they are sick, but they will not call the church or inform the pastor. And if you ask them why, their response is, oh, I don't want to bother the pastor. I don't want to trouble the pastor. And my response always is, have you ever called the church or the church administrator and have they ever responded and say, why are you bothering us? Why are you troubling us? So usually it's not the case. When somebody goes to the hospital, they don't want to call the church or the pastor, but quietly in their mind, they expect, they hope that the pastor or the deacons will come and visit them. For me, that is an unspoken request. We are not mind readers. How can we know 
unless you make your need known to us. Some people are unwilling to ask for help because for whatever reason, they are very particular about how they like to be helped. So you see some people in church, they do things and they feel that they are doing it all by themselves and they are fussy. If you don't do it the way, just the way they wanted it done, then they don't need your help or they won't even ask for your help. And sometimes you see most people will not help these people and then they complain. Like Martha, you remember Martha going to Jesus saying, I'm busy cooking, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And Martha even had the gall to ask Jesus, please go and tell my sister Mary to come and help me. Put Jesus in a terrible situation. But Jesus was very diplomatic. I mean, Jesus could have said to Martha, if you want to ask your sister to help you, go and tell your sister. She won't even go and tell the sister. She probably will yell at her, and I'm sure her sister has experience in the past helping her, and felt that she was so fussy, you can please her, so just let her do it all by herself. But Jesus said, no, Martha, Martha, you're busy about a lot of things, you're fussy, but your sister Mary has chosen the important part, the necessary part, sitting, listening to Jesus, and that shall not be taken away. So we find here that if people offer you any help, accepting someone's help is as good as giving someone help. As you grow older, you'll find that you need more help. As you grow older, you'll find that uh, whatever help you can get, don't say no. I have realized that whenever I get an invitation or for dinner or invitation to any kind of social gathering, I accept. When people offer to help me, I accept because that is my way of helping these people put some treasures in heaven. When people call me to help them, I accept and I help them. Neighbors can help each other. Deacons can call, even during this pandemic time, other members of the church and ask, offer. And those who are called, don't be afraid to say, thank you for offering your help. I will accept. When uh, the visitors to Abraham, you know, were offered hospitality, and immediately they say, we accept. And Abraham showed hospitality. So Jesus said, if you want to help somebody, you want to put some treasures in heaven, start small. How about offering a cup of cold water to somebody who is thirsty? And when you do that, you will find that you are doing it unto Jesus. Our closing hymn is 531, My Country Taste of Thee.
Once again, we remind you of your offering to this church to support the ministry and also your prayer concern. Don't be afraid to send them and ask for help when you need them. And now the benediction, may God bless you and keep you. May God smile on you and be gracious to you. May God look you full in the face and make you smile back at God with peace and love and gratitude in your heart. Go in peace and share God's love with others. Amen.